When you think about LiDAR, you often think about kind of the giant bucket spinning on top of the car and the $75,000 sensors. But the world has really moved on from that. We are with Sally Frickman from Velodyne. And one of the things that's been introduced very recently by Velodyne is the Velobit. So, Sally, could you tell us a little bit about what Velobit is and why it's important? Absolutely. So Velobit is our small, compact, embeddable sensor. So it really fits into the palm of your hand. The best way to describe it is it's about the size of a pack of uh, playing cards, even smaller, in fact. So the Velobit, um, it has a 100-meter range, and it's designed for a myriad of applications. So we're thinking about that this in terms of um, ADAS, uh, so driver safety systems, autonomy, and then also in robotics and UAVs, drones, um, even security systems, or anything you can really think of. Um, our tagline right now is small size, big safety, and also that the possibilities are endless. When you're talking about it, you're, you're, you're considering a shift from LiDAR being something that's only really seen in autonomous vehicles to something where it's seen kind of throughout, not just regular vehicles, but in new use cases that we haven't seen before? Right, so what you'll see with uh, Velodyne LiDAR is that our sensors have progressively gotten smaller, first of all, and second of all, have, they've, um, they've changed and adapted so that they are able to be embedded in a variety of applications. So for, you know, our the well-known kind of the bigger sensor is called the HDL64, primarily used in autonomous vehicles. And then we started coming out with a line of products such as um, the, our Puck products that were beginning to be used in drones and in robotics and in unmanned ground vehicles. And now we've continued to take our innovative technology and we've made it smaller and smaller and smaller and put it in the bell of it. And we're just excited to see how many applications come out of it and also what's happening right now and how it's being embedded and used and how we're thinking about LiDAR in a whole different way. What kind of effects do you think it'll have on driver safety? Because we're used to people having front and rear facing cameras, right. we're used to the ultrasonic sensors, but how do you think this will transform the driver experience for the non-autonomous driver? Actually that was our, our main focus. So with Velodyne our focus and our mission is safety. We know traffic collisions and fatalities are a huge issue around the world globally and we feel like by embedding this $100 sensor in a consumer vehicle, you're going to highly and significantly advance the current ADAS features that are in vehicles right now. So you're going to get your forward-facing collision warning. So, you know, just the object detection and, and the localization, everything that you can do with a LiDAR sensor being embedded into consumer vehicles. You can imagine how much safer those vehicles are, how much more they can detect, and how much information they can gather. It's pretty phenomenal and exciting. Do you see any kind of link with other V2V systems for non-autonomous vehicles and autonomous vehicles? I certainly do. What we're, what we're seeing a lot of right now is smart city applications and using our LiDAR technology, particularly the pucks. But we think as, if you can continue to, de to deploy the technology in whatever size, but certainly the velvet, because the velvet also can be embedded around vehicles or with, you know, wherever it may be, there can be several of them used. And that's kind of the beauty of the, of the size and the beauty of the price. So when you're having LiDAR sensors, you're really able to deploy this more V to V, V to X, smart city technology, where vehicles are able to potentially talk to each other, but not only that, the infrastructure is able to talk to each other and therefore creating this um, environment where everyone is safer because everyone kind of knows where everyone else is or you know whatever that object may be yeah and I think that again deploying a sensor that's affordable cost-effective and meets uh, meet size requirements is going to be able to improve safety smart city technology autonomous vehicle technology and driver safety technology significantly at the other end of the scale you've also introduced the alpha prime, alpha prime. that's correct can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that so that's our highest performance sensor. It's actually the world's highest performing sensor in terms of the combination of field of view, range, and resolution. It is designed for fully autonomous vehicles for level four, level five. So for object recognition and mapping and localization at highway speeds. So we'll be seeing it deployed and we are seeing it deployed on a lot of like robo taxis and fleets that are going to be 
coming out. So we've been shipping a lot since our announcement a couple months ago. And we're really, really excited about our product. This is a state of art, we kind of call it our flagship product. It's pretty cool. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. We will be back with more from CES 2020. Uh, this is Transport Evolved as it always is. You can comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and obviously you can sponsor us through Patreon or Ko-fi. Keep evolving!